So I know this is my third video on the matter now. I know some of you would like me to move on to other topics, but as this story keeps developing, so does my frustration. And I'm sorry, but I'll have to talk about the recent fiasco surrounding Guild Wars 2 once again. If you haven't been following the situation, watch my last video titled Fired Guild Wars 2 Dev Response and She Still Doesn't Get It. It explains everything that's happened prior to this video in detail and it's got all my personal thoughts on the matter. But basically, Guild Wars 2 narrative team member Jessica Price verbally and very publicly debased Eroir, a member of the Guild Wars 2 community, an ArenaNet partner, and a prominent streamer no less who even has an NPC named after him, on Twitter when all he did was leave feedback in a very polite and well-intentioned way, shifted the discussion towards gender issues and sexism when nothing Derar said remotely insinuated he was making sexist remarks, insulted members of the Guild Wars 2 community by calling them rando asshats, and made her own gender-targeted remarks like how there are a lot of hurt man-feels today. Another member of Guild Wars 2's narrative team, Peter Fries, came to her defense, arguing that Jessica didn't ask for Derar's feedback and that her public Twitter profile is her private place. Word of all this very quickly got around, and it all eventually culminated in ArenaNet CEO Mike O'Brien announcing on Guild Wars 2's official forums the following day that he's decided to fire the two developers in question from the company, noting that their behavior wasn't acceptable, while assuring that ArenaNet wants to foster an environment where community feedback is welcomed and valued, not belittled or shunned. Since then, when requested for comment, Jessica sent out an email to websites The Verge and Kotaku, through which she touted how her public Twitter account was her personal space, once again made this whole debacle about gender issues, talked about toxic community members and mob mentality, advertised her recent behavior as speaking truth to power, and pushed the sensationalist narrative that ArenaNet's messaging with how they dealt with her was that if Reddit wants you fired from the company, you'll get fired. In retort, I said that while I don't deny inequality and toxic behavior exists, while arguments could be made for or against whether Mike was too harsh by resorting to firing rather than temporary reprimands, Jessica hurt her case by trying to skew perception of an incident that had nothing to do with these issues in her favor, by exploiting these issues to masquerade the simple fact that she was an asshole to a polite member of the community and game she represents, and by hypocritically becoming the very thing she shunned a toxic social media presence. Some media outlets who have covered the story have also sided with Jessica, highlighting her gender issues argument while making light of the toxic way she behaved and shunning Mike O'Brien for not siding with his own employees, for allegedly bending to Reddit's will. Media coverage didn't stop there though, website Polygon recently sat down with Jessica Price for an exclusive interview, and when they reached out to ArenaNet CEO Mike O'Brien, he responded to the narrative that's being thrown out there against them, the information of which was compiled in a recently published article. The article begins by quoting Jessica, who expressed how she wasn't given the opportunity to make her case. She said, quote, I was given no opportunity to argue my case. My manager was on vacation. O'Brien spent some time insisting that developers must be friends with the company's customers, and that it was unacceptable to say that we aren't, even when we're not on the clock. He told me I'd look back and regret this because we were doing great work and I'd ruined it. The whole thing was highly unprofessional, there was zero reason for him to be there, he wanted to vent his anger, and he had the power to command a woman to stand there while he took his feelings out on her, so he did. Then he walked out, the manager got my stuff from my desk, and the HR person asked for my key card. Really? She actually has the audacity to accuse someone else of being highly unprofessional? Now, I'll be the first to admit that her not being presented an opportunity to argue her case is something worth contending about. One could argue that the way things played out might have been too harsh, that this wouldn't be how you would have handled the situation. I can accept that there will be varying opinions surrounding what's essentially an upheaval of Jessica's life. But it doesn't help Jessica's case that whenever she faces the consequences of her actions, her first line of defense is that it all happened because she was a woman, not because Jessica herself did anything wrong. Notice how thus far there hasn't been a single time where Jessica has acknowledged any wrongdoing. She's unable to admit that she played a part in her present circumstances. She genuinely believes every action she's taken leading up to her firing was the absolute correct one. She has this innate ability to twist every 
every little unrelated detail to one source, gender issues. For example, Jessica highlights how there was zero reason for Mike to be present when she was fired, that the only reason he was there was to vent his anger, to command power over a woman. But if he wouldn't have been present, what would she have argued then? That he wasn't there because he didn't value women enough to look them in the eye as they were being fired? With Jessica, it feels like no matter how things would have played out, no matter what actions Mike would have taken, it all would have bogged down to one singular argument. This happened because I'm a woman. I'll say again that sexism isn't something I would dare downplay, but when you skew perception of every unrelated incident by playing the sexism card, when polite feedback is argued as condescension to women, when the presence of your employer and his frustration is also hearkened to sexism right after, it makes it harder and harder for people to consider your argument. At that point, you're mudding your case rather than clarifying its merits. Moving on, Jessica reiterated how during her interview, she was encouraged to speak out against issues, stating, quote, I was told during my interview and subsequent hiring communications that ArenaNet respected my willingness to speak up on issues in the industry and had no desire to muzzle me. I had in my time there zero warnings about my social media use. Everything I said on Twitter was consistent with what I've been saying for years and how I've been saying it. It felt like it was too good to be true when they offered me a job. They promised me that I wouldn't have to check my identity at the door. They said that they admired my willingness to speak up about issues in the industry. There was so much that we were doing internally that encouraged me to hope, to trust them. There were executives talking about diversity and building a non-toxic work environment, and acknowledging that talk wasn't enough, that they had to put money and effort and leadership behind it. There were meetings in which executives promised us that they wanted us to speak up about the ugly things, the harmful things, and that we wouldn't be punished for doing so. There was constant talk about how to make it the sort of place that you dream of working at, not just because of the cool games we were making, not just because of the benefits and perks, but because it was going to be a corrective to the exploitation and toxicity of so much of the industry. And so it's devastating that a company talking all that talk folded like a cheap car table the first time their values were actually tested. Doing the right thing is hard, sure, but doing it regularly makes it easier to keep doing it. And the corollary to that is that capitulating makes it harder to stop capitulating. This is so frustrating to read because Jessica does not understand the difference between being vocal about issues and just flat out attacking someone with unwarranted verbal hostility. When the company said speak up about issues, I'm pretty sure they did not mean take constructive feedback from the community, twist its intentions, and then rally to attack them. Yes, ArenaNet's values were tested, but not the values of allowing employees to speak out about issues, but rather the values of fostering an environment of positivity around the community. And when these values were tested, guess what? They held strong. They didn't side with someone who was willing to debase the community just on the merit of, we look out for our own. Mike looked at the situation for what it was and said, yeah, you can speak up about issues, but this isn't that. This is something else, and it's not acceptable. Jessica, can you honestly tell me that if you were to give a lecture on gender issues, you could point to Derrar's polite comment and how you responded as a good example on what sexism and gender issue actually looks like and have the majority rally in support of your cause? I would confidently argue that the answer is a resounding no, because it takes common sense to see that Derrar politely disagreeing with you had nothing to do with gender. Jessica then continued by claiming once again that Mike O'Brien simply buckled under the pressure of community backlash, stating, quote, Let's be clear, in 2018, it's absurd to pretend ignorance of what would happen to a woman fired for speaking about sexism, because he feels she got too uppity. He painted a target on everyone's back. He didn't just fail Peter and me, or even the employees for which he was responsible, he failed the entire industry. He caved to a handful of people and an army of bots and sock puppets. Now now he's got almost every female developer I know, as well as some men, furious with him. I've got recruiters pinging me, promising they'll steer candidates away from ArenaNet, and game design professors saying they're going to warn their students away. I've also had a lot of ArenaNet co-workers and other industry colleagues contacting me to express how afraid this has made them. Now this right here, ladies and gentlemen, 
is incredibly rich. One of the things she shunned about the Guild Wars 2 community's reaction to Jessica's recent tirades was the way they rallied together to defend one of their own. So when the Guild Wars 2 community does it, they're just mindless, angry mobs. But when her own colleagues come in her defense, touting how recruiters are promising to steer candidates away from ArenaNet, how game design professors are warning students away, how fear is being spread against the company, then that's great. She has this mentality of, when things are going in my favor, then it's justice, but when things are going against my favor, it's sexism and harassment. Similarly, when somebody leaves feedback that preaches to her choir, everything's fine and dandy, but the second anyone disagrees, even if politely, it becomes a gender issue. And now, when a group of people rally in defense of one of their own, if it happens to her, it's called support, but if it happens against her, then it's just a bunch of, and I quote, bots and sock puppets. This is why it's impossible to believe that Jessica has anything real to say. She's a great a hypocrite. She's a great a liar too, attributing her recent behavior to merely getting uppity about sexism. But one objective gander at Derar's polite comments and the way she responded is all it takes to see that Jessica didn't merely get uppity about sexism, she got viciously aggressive about general feedback. And that's what the real issue is here, despite how much she and some truly biased media outlets would have you believe otherwise. With all due respect, Mike O'Brien didn't fail anyone. All he failed to do was yield on his values that the community is to be respected, not feared, respected, treated like you would have them treat you. And being resolute about that value is what I would call a success. And if the gaming industry somehow thinks Jessica's behavior was acceptable, that Mike had absolutely no cause for doing what he did, then the gaming industry is failing itself. Jessica also addressed the firing of her colleague Peter Fries, saying that she plans to talk to him sometime this week, and adding, quote, Peter stepped in to point out that his experience as a male dev was different. He stated pretty simple facts. I had no idea he was going to step in. I adore him. He was doing the right thing, and he deserves none of this crap. Yeah, there's definitely some contention around whether Peter deserved to be fired or not. On the one hand, he didn't directly contribute to the attacks Jessica made against Derroir. But on the other hand, he did defend her behavior, and that might be enough cause for consequences. I cannot say there's a right answer here. It's up to each company to deliberate what crossing the line is. All I'll say is that Peter seems like a more honorable and overall cool individual, and I do wish him the best. From there, Polygon's article talked a bit about her career, noting how she was previously fired from a role-playing game company for complaining about its lack of response to a male business associate who sexually harassed women at the company, with Jessica noting how this made her consider getting out of games. Now, having no knowledge of what transpired there, this is an incident I can't really speak about with certainty. But assuming things transpired as Jessica says, then sure, in that case it would be an injustice, and I would sympathize with her in that regard. But her pent-up frustrations for such situations doesn't excuse her venting against someone who did nothing to deserve the kind of ire she gave him, and twisting an unrelated situation to be about gender issue to that end. All that's done is murk up her credibility and affect perception against her. All she's done is hurt her case and cause. Polygon's article then shifted gears by presenting Mike O'Brien's response to the situation. And if you ask me, everything he has to say here is very sensible and absolutely on point. Here's how the statement reads. Jessica had identified herself as an ArenaNet employee on Reddit and Twitter, had been discussing Episode 3 storytelling with fans on Reddit, then had written a 25-part tweet about how we tell stories in MMOs, relating it back to Episode 3. She was representing the company. The expectation was to behave professionally and respectfully, or at least walk away. Instead, she attacked. Concerns have been publicly raised that she was responding to harassment. It's not my place to tell employees when they should or shouldn't feel harassed. In this case, however, our employees could have chosen not to engage, and they could have brought the issue to the company, whereby we would have done everything we could to protect them. We won't tolerate harassment. When an employee feels harassed, we want them to bring the issue to us so that we can protect the employee, deal with the issue, and use it to speak to the larger issue of harassment. Whatever Jessica and Peter felt internally about the situation, this was objectively a customer engaging us respectfully and professionally, presenting a suggestion for our game. Any response from our company needed to be respectful and professional. A perceived slight 
doesn't give us license to attack. We have all dedicated our careers to entertaining people, to making games for the purpose of delighting those who play them. We generally have a wonderful relationship with our community, and that's a point of pride for us. We want to hear from our players. It's not acceptable that an attempted interaction with our company, in this case a polite game suggestion, would be met with open hostility and derision from us. That sets a chilling precedent. The tweets were made on July 4th, when the studio was closed for the holiday. Day. We were aware of them that day and decided we'd need to take action in the morning. The fact that the community's anger was escalating on July 5th could make it look like our action was a response to the community's anger, but that wasn't the case. We took action as soon as we practicably could. I hate to let an employee go, and I wish the best for Jessica and Peter, as for any former employee, in whatever they choose to do next. Whatever you thought of the tweets, Jessica and Peter were also part of the team that brought you the kidnapping scene in episode 1, which was a wonderfully well-executed scene. That's how I want to remember their time at ArenaNet. There is really not much else I need to add to what is a very self-explanatory statement that neatly summarizes everything I've been arguing. Regardless of whether you believe firing these two was too harsh a punishment or not, I hardly think that one can deny that Mike had legitimate causes for his deliberation. I get that some companies or employers might have dealt with this differently and that's fine, but Mike put his foot down on the matter and carried out what he felt was the appropriate action given the situation and what his company represents. And I personally sympathize with Mike, given that if I hired someone on the Yong Ya crew and they did what Jessica did to a member of my community with no real cause, I very well might have done the same because to me, nothing is more important than the community. And I get the sense that for Mike, who's company ArenaNet and their MMO, Guild Wars 2, is built on community. The way Jessica and Peter reacted crossed a certain line that adheres to the kind of company he wants to run. Claiming that based on this incident, Mike is setting a precedent where Reddit can just say, I don't like this person, fire him or fire her, and have their wishes be Mike's command is utterly ridiculous. Not sure why it cannot be argued that Mike saw the situation for what it was and said, no, that's not acceptable for the kind of company I want to run. It's not as if Mike has some extensive history of unfairly firing people or anything like that, as far as I know at least. The interview finally concluded with a few last unapologetic comments from Jessica, starting with, I looked every female narrative designer on the team in the eye and told her, this place will value you and will let you be who you are. They trusted me and I led them wrong. The wounds from Gamergate had just started to heal in terms of women in the industry starting to relax and trust their employers. The fact that it was a company that touts itself as welcoming to marginalized talent that may have reignited a hate campaign designed to drive marginalized talent out of games is a very painful irony. No, you're blowing things way out of proportion. There is no irony here except the one where the person fighting against toxicity and harassment is doing and becoming the very thing she hates. Jessica then expressed that she has zero regrets about how she handled herself, stating, quote, Given that the term asshat was apparently a sticking point for ArenaNet, I'd maybe use condescending jerk instead. Men pop in my mentions to tell me how to do my job all the time. They pop up to explain my female colleagues' own jokes to them. So A, changing insults would have made zero difference whatsoever, as that is still an unwarranted verbal attack, and B, the fact that she's still convinced Derar's polite responses had anything to do with gender should tell you how utterly deluded Jessica is. Jessica then went back to talk about Peter's firing and tried to appeal to males as well, saying this, Male game devs deal with it too. Gamers don't seem to believe expertise exists. But it's not the constant deluge it is for women, which was the point of the tweets that Peter made that got him fired. He was saying, Hey, this is about gender because I'm out here talking about the same stuff she's talking about, and this doesn't happen to me. Okay, so this right here perfectly highlights my qualms with Jessica. She will lie through her teeth or interpret something her way to skew perspective in her favor. If you look at the tweets Peter posted that got him fired, you will notice that not a single remark had anything to do with gender. What Peter argued was that Jessica didn't ask for Gerard's feedback and that Jessica's Twitter account was private, which we all know is a silly argument given that Twitter is a public forum and Jessica presented herself as an ArenaNet developer. I also argued in my last video Jessica could have simply ignored Derar's feedback or politely told him that this wasn't an environment in which she wished to engage in this discussion. 
Despite the arguments behind Peter's tweets being clear as day, Jessica claims that what he really meant to say was, hey, this is about gender because I'm here talking about the same stuff she's talking about and this doesn't happen to me. Jessica is literally putting words in Peter's mouth to make herself look better. Do you see what I mean? Do you see why it's impossible to trust Jessica? Do you see why Jessica is such a detriment to her own cause? It often feels less like she's fighting for the cause and more like she's exploiting it for her personal agenda. Jessica concluded by saying that she's staying away from social media, adding, quote, I'm very tired. I'm not reading the reactions. What would be the point? I have a security team handling my social media since I'm under full bot assault. There's nothing worth reading from bots and strangers on Twitter. If fellow devs want to reach out to me, and they have been in droves, we have a network of mutual connections through which they can do that. So, you can dish it, but you can't take it. To be fair though, at this point, the backlash against Jessica has reached a point where nothing productive could really come out of her social media anymore, especially since Jessica herself is unwilling to make any compromises with her utterly deluded arguments. Now, what's equally disappointing about the situation is the way some major news outlets have been presenting this story. I've already talked about how outlets like Rock Paper Shotgun have taken to misinterpreting or downplaying De Roar and Mike O'Brien's intentions while putting Jessica up on a pedestal. But perhaps the best way to highlight how the media is also contributing to underhandedly skewing perceptions surrounding this incident is by taking a look at Polygon's very own interview article. I'd like to direct your attention to the quotes that Polygon decided to highlight in large font size and all caps, which include the following. He had the power to command a woman to stand there. Zero warnings. They wanted us to speak up about the ugly things. Bots and sock puppets. It's absurd to pretend ignorance. Marginalized talent. Gamers don't seem to believe expertise exists. Notice how not a single quote from Derar or Mike O'Brien's reasonable statements were highlighted, low-key being made to look less relevant instead. Every highlighted quote was specifically chosen to put Jessica up on a pedestal to skew perception towards the narrative that the recent incident was a gender issue and that the Guild Wars 2 community are just a bunch of mindless, angry, ignorant bots. Mike's response was quoted as an aside and at no point does Polygon's article try to empathize with his perspective. Instead, the outlet sets a very clear tone towards the beginning of the article with quotes like this, Fans mostly ignored Price's point about women professionals constantly being questioned by men. They wanted to express their anger about a member of the community being rebuked. Price's bosses, it turned out, agreed with the angry fans. Yeah, more like Polygon and Jessica ignored the Guild Wars 2's community's point that the issue of women in the workplace was raised and used as a tool for verbal assault when the situation definitely did not call for that. Oh, and here is the best part. Towards the very end, Polygon points out how Deroir denies that his comments to Price were gendered, but then highlights that one of his tweets included the hashtag I am a feminist to make a case against Derar's claims that gender had nothing to do with it. But what they don't point out is that the hashtag was only included in a comment that was made after Jessica shifted the conversation to be about sexism. None of the initial feedback to Jessica's string of tweets came close to insinuating that Derar's comments were gendered. Derar only defended himself in that regard after Jessica attacked him with her unsubstantiated accusations. And yet Polygon will have you believe otherwise by presenting partial information that will adhere to the narrative they want to artificially push without presenting the full content Context. Journalism at its best, huh? I've said this before and I'll say it again. If you want to fight the good cause, then that's great. You do you. But if you're going to resort to hypocrisy, lies, and deceit, if you're going to contribute to toxic behaviors you yourself are shunning to win at all costs, you're only doing your cause a disservice by delegitimizing it. If you want to fight for a good cause and if you want people to take you seriously, do so by presenting incidents, situations, or cases where your stance is clearly affirmed and not where you try to mold one thing into something else, do so with some fucking integrity. My hope is that this video will help in balancing out some of the frustrating bullshit that's being flung around. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy my content and would like to support this channel directly, consider donating on Patreon. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.